And I want to share with us a message entitled, uh, Having Faith in God's Will. Praise the name of the living God. Or faith in God's will. Faith in God's will. Praise the name of the living God. Faith in God's will. Number one, I would like to begin by saying that um, I am a beneficiary of understanding God's will from when I was young as a youth. My life I can say that uh, I am what I am because in my youth God was able to fill me with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. You can imagine at the age of 23 having a job as a civil servant and resigning to go into full-time ministry because I knew that God has called me into full-time ministry. Praise the name of the living God. At the age of 23, I knew that my life was designed to be able to serve God in the ministry of the word. And to me, beginning early, my journey of calling has helped me to be where I am today. Maybe I would have taken longer if I delayed in understanding God's will for my life. But now there was enough time for preparation. There was enough time to be able to learn whatever God wanted me to learn. And then God was able to position me to do what he wanted me to do. I am not yet there. I am still pressing on that I may get hold of that which Christ Jesus has gotten hold for me. But I want to encourage the young people, especially who are listening to me, those who are here, those who are in the church without walls, that it is important for you to have faith in God's will. God is not only a master designer, but he is also a master planner. Praise the name of the living God. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, and these plans are not for evil, they are for good to give you a hope and a future. God is a master planner. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that God, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope, to give you hope and a future. God is a master planner. He has a blueprint for each one of us. You know, a blueprint is like when you are building this house, there is that master plan that shows you all the details of this building and how it is supposed to be constructed and how every loom, the measurement and the height and everything that goes with that structure. The same way God has a master plan, he has a blueprint for each one of us. But it takes, number one, faith. To be able to believe that God has a plan for me. And number two, that God's will is the best for me. You know, sometimes you may think that our choices are good for us. And whatever I want to do, maybe that is what fits me or whatever other people decide. But I want to tell you, you know, when you are a teenager, when you are a youth, you make major decisions that are going to affect you the rest of your lifetime. Most of the decisions we make in your, our youth, decisions about career, decisions about marriage, decisions about where we are going to live, and many other decisions about even faith, they affect us for a lifetime. And you find that most of the decisions that shaped people's lives, uh, they made those decisions uh, when they were young. We were looking at the stat at statistics uh, the other day, and we saw that uh, many people give their lives uh, at the age of 19 and below. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Between 19 and 24 is only like 15%. 
Sometimes you find that between uh, um, the, the age above 80 is almost zero. The age between 60 and 80 is about 1% of people who give their life to Christ. So most of the major decisions in life, uh, they are made uh, when we are young, when we are teenagers, when we are youth. That is when we make major decisions uh, that are going to affect us the less of our lifetime. And when you see me standing before you, I am a product uh, of the decisions that I have made in life. When you see somebody's life being destroyed, uh, it is because at some point in time, uh, there are decisions that they made. There are decisions that they embraced in their life. And that is what shapes you or destroys you. Praise the name of the living God. And so for me, every young person, one of the cry, one of the yearning you need in your heart is, oh God, let your will be done in my life. Remember the Lord's Prayer when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come here on earth as your kingdom come let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven praise the name of the living god so one of the key prayer points that we are supposed to make uh, in our lives and especially when we are young is that prayer point uh, to align with god's will personally i invested a lot of time to pray that oh god let your will be done in my life. And I can tell you, I don't have any regrets in my life. The decisions I've made about marriage, the decision I made about ministry, the choices I made even about where to serve. Because God is so detailed. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 26 uh, that he even determined the times and the places we are to be born. Huh? From one man, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them. Look at this. And the exact places where they should live. God is even a God of geographical locations. For you to be able to connect with your inheritance, to connect with your blessings, you should be in the right place at the right time. Maybe I imagine now, because when I left my home village, I went to Nairobi, and I lived in Nairobi for about 10 years, and uh, out of those 10 years, I think uh, um, about seven years I was born again, and I was already engaged in ministry. Imagine how, how I would have made a choice to live in Nairobi, because it's a capital city, it's the biggest but when God spoke to me in the year 203, 202, and then later I came here in the year 203, and he told me to come to Nakuru, I obeyed. God told Abraham, leave your people. Leave your own land. And I want you to go to the place that I will show you. I want to leave you to leave a place that you are, you are very familiar I want you to go to the place I'll show you. How many can obey? When God is speaking to you to move from what you know to what you don't know. And you just pray. When I left the city in Nairobi, many people were asking me, where are you going? We are here for you. You are leaving us. Do you know anyone in Akuru? No. Have you preached in Akuru? No. But I am going. Because I have heard God telling me, go. Praise the name of the living God. See what the Lord has done along the ears. Praise the name of the living God. That is why I stand before you to tell you, I am a beneficiary of God's will. I am a beneficiary of allowing God to fill me with the knowledge of his will. And this I got it from the word of God. I understood that God does not begin anything until he has seen the end 
Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10, uh, the Bible says that he declares the end from the beginning. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. I will do all that I please. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible says, I make known the end from the beginning. This is the sovereignty of God. Tell us that I am in control. I am in charge. You know, in our lives, we have a plan. Maybe for one year, for two years. In the ministry, we did our strategic plan for the next 10 years. In the government, I know we have Vision 2030. Uh, but how many of us can be able to plan for the next 50 years? 100 years. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Allow God to fill you. Uh, Paul was praying for the church in Colossae, in Colossians, chapter 1 and verse 9. And he was telling them, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped uh, for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. This is some of the scriptures that I used to pray with when I was a youth. I was telling, oh God, fill me Lord with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Because Paul was a seasoned man of God, a preacher, an intercessor. And he knew the first thing you need as a believer is not a car. The first thing you need as a believer is not even a job. The first thing you need as a child of God is to be full of the knowledge of the word of God in all spiritual wisdom, not carnal wisdom. Praise the name of the living God. But spiritual wisdom and understanding. And from this book of Colossians, you see that there are nine things that happen. When you are full of the knowledge of the will of God, there are nine things that happen. If you continue to read verse 10, the Bible says, when you are full of the knowledge of the will of God, what will happen? Verse 10, the Bible says, and we pray this in order. Why are we praying for the knowledge of the will? We pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of of the Lord. A life worthy? Praise the name of the living God. The worthiness of anything is when it is being used to serve its purpose. The worthiness of this podium is when it is being used in the altar. If you take it into your house and you use it as a cupboard, it's not worth. If you go and use this speaker as a stool to sit on, Yes, you are going to be seated on, um, on one of the surfaces. But it's not worth. It's much more than a seat. Praise the name of the living God. So if you are going to live a life worthy of the Lord, is when you are full of the knowledge of the will of God. There is a lot of abuse. When you don't know your identity. When you don't know who you are. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Sister Mire Kazi Nikon in Afanya Nimbaya. But I still imagine, come and get back to who call. Would it be worth? Praise the name. Ata kama watu wale Nikon in Afanya Kazi now wengine walipata promotion. Lakini siku ya leo, I still see that it, it was worth for me to resign and do what I am doing today. Bwana Swe San. Do you know some people go look at them and he say, is it worth for you to be doing what you are doing? Whereas there is much more I deposited in your life. Whereas I have the big plan for your life. The worthiness of something is when it is being used for its purpose. Point number two, the Bible says, and may please him in every way. You know, the Bible says God looks down on earth uh, at all descendants of Abraham. You know, when God is looking at us, he's not just looking at us as a, as, as a multitude. He is able to see each one of us and he is able to see if we are doing what we were supposed to do. 
As the Bible says in Colossians, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, the Bible says that you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that were prepared for you to walk. Huh? Huh? That were prepared in advance for us to do. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Workmanship is like, like the, the person who, who did the workmanship of this podium. Before they did this podium, they had the raw materials. And these raw materials, I can tell you they can produce different items. He could have done a table. He could have done a cupboard. He could have done different items with this material. But number one, he decided, what do I want to do? or to create, or to make. What is the purpose? The purpose informed the design. Praise. So the, 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 the material could be the same. But the purpose informs, the, that is why the Bible says, he is a potter and we are the clay. You know a potter may have a big, almost a hill of soil, of clay. But he is able to cut or to take some soil and make this one kind of uh, pottery and then from the same clay make another design of pottery. So he is a potter. We are the clay. And we must understand what he is shaping us to become. Because you are not a carbon copy. Tell your neighbor I am not a carbon copy. Praise the name of the living God. Let's go back to Colossians. Uh, the Bible says, uh, if you are going to preach God, uh, you must walk in his will. Praise the name of the living God. Huh? Ukipata bibi ya rusi ya mebebo na tinga tinga. Si hata utona hiyo ni ya bunomo. Na wewe kuna vitu naeza kuu nafanya. Mungu wa kiangalia kiwa juu binguni. Anasema this is a bunomo. Because zile una, vitu nafanya. Ha? Ni kama utoke mtu ukute ananyoa ndevu na panga. Anafanya hiyo. Uta muangeresha ama uta toroka. Praise the name of the living God. Kwa sababu unaona kire chombo anatumia... It's not for its own purpose. So that you may please him in every way. The Bible says, bearing fruit in every good work. If you are going to become fruitful in this life, you must be aligned to God's will for your life. Your fruitfulness is determined by your alignment. Because there is a way you are wired. There is a way you are designed. So if you are doing that which you are wired and designed to do, you become fruitful, bearing fruit in every good work. The Bible says, growing in the knowledge of God. God will continue to give you more and more liberation if you stick to your purpose. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible says, being strengthened with all power. Hallelujah. If you're going to be strengthened with all power, you must be aligned. Some of you may not be strengthened with all power. And with, with all power means that uh, even the resources, even the graces that you require. God will never release everything that he ordained for you if you are not using it for his purpose. But once you are aligned to his purpose, he is going to release everything that he ordained for you. The Bible says, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. One of the things that have helped me to endure, even when things were not working for me, I endured. I have given you a testimony. There was a time I was in the verge of giving up, writing a letter to God. Because after waiting upon him, I felt it's like I lost the way. But God assured me that this is still the way. Continue to follow it. When you know you are on the way, even when things are not working for you, you endure. 
Praise the name of the living God. You don't keep on jumping from one marriage to the other. You don't keep on jumping from one career to the other. You don't keep on jumping from one city to the other. You know this is the will of God for my life. I prayed for this marriage and God spoke to me. I prayed for this job. I prayed for this calling and God assured me I am in his will. So even when things are not working out, you endure, you are patient. You are like someone who is sitting on a nail. Praise the name of the living God. But you are sitting on a nail because you know this is the will of God for me. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. And you are there like the psalmist. Praise the name of the living God. Who said, I waited upon the Lord patiently. Is that Psalms 44 from verse 1? Until he came and lifted me out of the mire cray. Yes, 40 verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. And then the Bible says, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock. He gave me a firm place to stand. Hey, you cannot wait patiently when you are in a pit with the slimy clay, a muddy pit. But you can only be in that pit because you know, this is God's will for my life. There was a time I was living with some play, in a place with some street children. And I was wondering now, this place is not very good for me. It's a bit nasty. And um, some people were sympathizing with me that time. And they told me, we want to get you out of this place. I prayed to God. And God told me, your time to get out of this place is not yet. They are sympathizing with you. But it is my will for you to be here. In this nasty place. There are reasons I want you to run. There is a character. I am developing in your life. Through what you are going through. Hey! So that you may have. When you know this is the will of God for my life. You don't keep on learning from everything. Sometimes you have great patience and endurance. You endure. You endure hardship. Praise the name of the living God. Because you know this is the will of God for my life. Oh, oh my God, I pray for you. May God fill you with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Oh my God, can somebody shout, let your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. Let it be done in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. I can tell you as a young person, if there is one thing you need to pray for, is God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. And even, when, even where I am today, praise the name of the living God, D.L. Moody said that our greatest fear should not be the fear of failure, but to succeed in the things that do not matter. Praise the name of the living God. Your greatest fear should not be the fear of failure. But you may succeed. But you succeed in things that do not matter. That are not in God's will for your life. Praise the name of the living God. I desire success God's way. I desire success in fulfilling God's purpose. So that one day I can say like Jesus... That my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible says in Psalms 139 and verse 16, Oh my God, God is a master prana. Psalms 139 verse 16, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. 
Let me ask you a question. I know most of you here are good students. Do you need a book to write the days ordained for a person? Do you need a book? You don't need a book. You need even a piece of paper. A piece of paper is enough to write the days. Even if you are writing the, you are writing the days and the months and the seconds and the milliseconds, you just need a piece of paper. But it's because uh, the book, praise the name of the living God, hallelujah, covers everything that you are supposed to do within those days. Praise the name of the living God. So the book is not just about the days. The book uh, is all about uh, what you are supposed uh, to accomplish within all those days. If they are 18 years uh, Five months, uh, two weeks, uh, and three days. Uh, in the book, it is also written, uh, what are you going to achieve? Uh, what are you going to accomplish uh, within those days? Uh, praise the name of the living God. Uh, there is a book uh, that is written uh, concerning you. Tell your neighbor there is a book. Hey, and according to that book, uh, you are successful. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. You may fail in chapter 3. But I can tell you, as you continue, praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. There are chapters of success. There are chapters of glory. There are chapters of great exploit. Yes, there could be a chapter or two where you are going through the desert. There could be a chapter when you are in the pit with the mire grave. Praise the name of the living God. But according to the book, the Bible says we move from one glory to the other. According to the word of God, the Bible says the right of the righteous shines brighter and brighter until the full dawn. By the time you get to the last chapter, you are right and shining bright hey may you continue to shine all the way to your prophetic destiny may God give you a revelation of what is written in your book in your dreams in your visions may God give you a glimpse to see what is written in the book as it was with Joseph he was given a glimpse of what is written in the book let me tell you something when Joseph was given a grip of what is written in the book, he was, I think God showed him a chapter whereby his brother, your brothers, uh, will bow before you. And Joseph prayed again and he told God, show me another chapter. And then another chapter where his parents were bowing before him. But I think God did not give him the chapter where he was to be taken to prison. <laughs> So I think when God is giving us a revelation of what is written in the book, there are something that he does not reveal to us. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. But I can tell you, according to the book, your light will shine brighter and brighter until the full dawn. Praise the name of the living God. There could be a chapter where, when your brothers will take you and they want to kill you. Put you in a pit. Take you out of the pit. Sell you to become a slave. But it is part of the journey. Praise the name of the living God. One day you look back uh, and you say like Joseph, uh, it is good that it happened. Praise the name of the living God. For the salvation of many. God was preparing me for such a day as this. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, there shall be no regret uh, as you continue to follow God's will uh, for you are uh, One day you look back uh, and you thank God uh, for everything uh, that has happened uh, in your life. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, according to the book, uh, you are successful. According to the book, uh, you are a carrier of a seed of greatness. Uh, according to the book, uh, you are a deliverer. According 
to the Buka, nations are waiting for you. According to the Buka, you shall do exploits in this life. Uh, because God did not waste his time uh, creating a nobody. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, God cannot use a whole book uh, to write the story of failure and misery and disgrace. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, but he can write a book uh, whereby he shall cause uh, all things to work for good. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, even the bad uh, and the ugly, he is able to turn it around uh, and cause it uh, to work for the good of them that love him and they are called according to his purpose. I pray for the same spirit that was upon Joseph when he received a revelation of what is written in the book. May God give you a revelation of what is written in your book. In the mighty name of Jesus, may this be your cry. Oh God, let your will be done in my life. Oh my God, may you raise a generation that have faith in your will, in your plan. In the mighty name of Jesus, God's plan is best for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, because I know the thoughts I have for you. He says the thoughts he has for you, they are not for evil, but for good to give you a hope and a future. In the name of Jesus.